Hello, and this is Chris Mack. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to do an ordinary least squares regression in R. This is for the course From Data to Decisions, and this is a bonus lecture uh, related to the Excel spreadsheet and lecture I gave, um, also linked on the web, web page, uh, on how to do linear regression in Excel. There's, in fact, multiple ways of doing that. There are multiple ways of doing it in R, but one is the, the standard way, which we'll uh, go through next. To begin, we have to bring the data in. Normally, we would set up our data in an Excel spreadsheet uh, with a column for the Y values and then a separate column for each X variable in our model. It's a, a simple linear regression. There's one X and one Y. Uh, we then output that data in a .csv format. Here I'm only going to use a few data points, and also I'll show you a different way of entering the numbers. We just type them in directly. So this line takes all the 11 Y values of my data set and puts them in an array. And I use the C function. C stands for concatenate, and it means I'm going to take all these numbers and lump them all together into one array. The so Y is an array. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with this, I'm using RStudio, which has a, a space for writing the code. A console down here is where the outputs come. This is what you would normally see if you were running R directly. Uh, the environment variable, uh, I'll show you where, where uh, that shows up in just a second. And over here, a miscellaneous window that includes the plots, help files, whatever else you ask for. So let's run this code by typing control R. And that first, I just ran the line where my cursor was, and all it did was stick all these numbers into an array, which we call Y. So this environment tells me the values of the variables that are in my environment. Um, it, it shows me that these are numbers, and the square brackets, 1 to 11, tells me that it's an array. So I have an array of 11 uh, numbers. All right, now the x values. In this particular case, the data set, the x values are spaced from 4 to 15. And there's multiple ways of typing those in. I could do exactly what we just did with the concatenate and the y variable. But since it's a regular array, I can uh, use this. Right, let me do it. Control R. Uh, you can see that the x is a set of integers. Because there are no decimal places, it realized they were integers. There's from 1 to 11 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 4 colon 14 gives me an array of all the integers between 4 and 14. I could also use this sequence. 14 does the exact same thing, beginning, ending, and step. In this case, the step is 1, but you could have steps other than 1. And if I ran that, again, it doesn't change the values of x at all. All right, now we've got our data input set of y values and a set of x values. Step one in almost any <laughs> regression is going to be to plot the data. So I uh, will use the generic plot function. It has lots of uh, options and capabilities. But the general form is some output as a function of some input. So y is a function of x. Now this what I have listed here as x uh, would be a formula. And we're not going to spend much time on how to do formulas yet. I just run that code real quick, control R, and there's my graph. So generic, it doesn't have much in terms of titles and everything, but you get to see the data. Uh, just real quickly, you can type formulas. For example, if I did a log log of x, that's the natural log of x. And if I ran that, I need the extra parentheses little x there tells me there's something wrong. Um, and I ran that. Now I'm plotting the log of x. And there's lots of other kinds of formulas that you could type, uh, but there is a very specific format for how to type formulas, which I'm not going to get into. All right, so this is y as a function of x. Once we see the plot of the data, let's actually do the OLS regression, ordinary least squares regression. The main function we use for doing that is LM, the linear model function. LM takes a model formatted in the same way as for our plot, 
i as a function of x. I could y, have y as a function of log x, or uh, I could have more than one input explanatory variables. Um, there's lots of other options available. We won't go through any of those options. Let's just run a linear regression of y as a function of x. So it'll be a straight line model for a simple linear regression. Control R. What did that just do? Well, it ran this modeling function, y as a function of x, and it put the results in an object called model. Now, this is an LM object, a linear model object, and it has embedded in this object a huge amount of stuff. Uh, it has the original data, it has the fitted values, it has the coefficients, and all kinds of other stuff. So let's look at what's in it. The simplest way to look at what's inside this, this object which I have named model uh, is the summary function. So if I run this summary of model, of course, I named it model. I can name it anything I want right here. And it runs the linear regression and dumps the model, uh, the LM object, into that variable. So let me run this summary. It put a whole bunch of stuff down here. So let me go all the way up to the beginning. So summary of model, it, it showed me what I called formula was. Uh, it gives me some summary statistics on the residuals, min, max, and Q1, Q2, and Q3. It shows me the coefficients, intercept and slope, their standard errors, T values, and P values to show that whether or not these particular uh, coefficients are statistically significant. It then shows me uh, the residual standard error, so the standard deviation of the residuals uh, using the formula uh, uh, sum of the square errors divided by n minus p, p the number of parameters. So it tells me nine degrees of freedom. So it's dividing by nine in its calculation of the standard deviation. It gives me the r squared, trusted r squared. We we'll, haven't gotten into that in class yet. F statistic and a test, p test on the f statistic is about model significance. Uh, whether the model is significant. Again, we haven't talked about that yet, but we will. So that basically all the exact same stuff you get if you ran Excel did the linest function. Uh, actually, I think a little bit easier to do it in R. The other thing, though, is R allows you to get at all kinds of other things that you can't get at easily or at all in Excel. So there's a whole bunch of other functions besides summary. For example, here's a function called coefficients. If I run that, it simply gives me the two coefficients of my model, intercept and the coefficient of x, which is the slope. I can also ask for the confidence intervals, give it a, an alpha value of 0.95, and give it the model, and calculate the confidence intervals, upper and lower for the intercept and for the slope. If I wanted an array of all the fitted values, the y hats, the predicted values for the given x values in my data set, I could run this routine. Right? And it just dumps an array. I can get the residuals of the model with the residuals function. I can get an ANOVA table. I can get the uh, um, covariance matrix for the model parameters, which also tells me uh, not just the uh, standard errors of the different models, the square root of the covariances along the diagonal, but also the interaction between the parameters. Uh, influence we haven't talked about yet, but we will. Um, in particular, uh, the hat matrix. Valuable. Uh, this library mass includes a function called studres, the studentized residuals, or the externally studentized residuals, which we're going to use lot going forward. So that will be an important function. And then we can plot things like uh, plotting up the residuals as a function of the fitted values, which is a useful function. So here I show the plot of the residuals versus the fitted values and uh, some other uh, plots in this file as well. All right, so that's my quick little demo on how to perform a linear regression using the LM function in R and how to get some of those results out. There's actually a whole lot of other stuff to do with this model 
you generated it with the LM function. Uh, and later in the class, we will talk about regression diagnostics and some of the other things we can do with our model to test how well uh, we've done modeling y as a function of x. Thanks.